Hello there, it's me and Stable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 4 of my Crusader Kings 3 Let's Play, starting off as Mercia and hopefully working our way up to the Empire of Britannia. Big thank you to all of my eagle-eyed viewers who uh, did spot that there is actually a du jour duchy's map mode button uh, down here. Um, for some reason I've missed that. I don't know. I'm, I'm used to having the map mode buttons down here in EU4 and CK2. Um... And I had a look down here for something once before and I couldn't find what it was and I, I just completely missed one. But yes, there is one for kingdoms, uh, there is one for empires, so there's Britannia, that's what we are aiming to form here. Um, but as, as we can see, I know we did ha have a brief look at this in uh, the last video, or maybe it was the second video. Um, so the blue outline is actually representing the area we control, and even though um, everything that we actually control is Mercia because we only have that one title right now, or that one uh, Petty Kingdom or Duchy level title. Uh, we actually also uh, straddle a little bit into Essex, into East Anglia, into Jorvik, into Lancaster. Wessex also own Huis, most of Essex and Kent. Um, so we do need to sort of start expanding. We're going to be going for uh, a bit more of Jorvik and a bit more of East Anglia. That's kind of the... Um, aim in this video at the end of the last video we were looking at the possibility of declaring a war on Jorvik we do have a CB we can't go for the kingdom yet because we do not have the appropriate uh, level we're not a paragon of virtue and it would cost 300 piety um, we can go for an entire duchy though which is only 80 piety 40 for a county so you know we get in three um, essentially getting three provinces three counties for the price of two all in one go without having to have a truce in between we do apparently have a similar military strength uh, they do have some alliances so we've got to be a little bit careful here but i think if we dive in we can probably get it done before we actually start that war though I'm going to have a look and see if there's anything else we can upgrade here because we probably can go and upgrade the Light Horsemen. I'm going to unpause the game and at least let them get up to their full size. Uh, it would be ideal if we could get them up to the third size, but that's not likely to happen. It's going to cost us too much um, money, I think, and would take too long. Let's just have a quick look at what we need to do here. Um, not an awful lot. We can designate a Guardian for our daughter. We don't currently have one. Uh, we could do this with um, Weiss, potentially. He's a good steward. Um, maybe he'd like to be the guardian of our daughter. Um, two more. Offer ward. So... Is he not letting me do that? Um, my daughter would be the ward... And yes, you. So he's my brother-in-law, anyway. So that that will be uh, really good. Um, is that'll increase his opinion of us as well, and we might end up with our daughter having a decent um, stewardship skill. So let's unpause again. We are making a reasonable amount of prestige. Uh, he's happy to accept that. That is excellent. We're still making decent piety. It's really, really good for us that we've got both the uh, compassionate and temperate um, boons there. Uh, all is fair. Many treatises have been written on honourable conduct in war, but the authors' lives went on the line when they were when they put. But those authors' lives weren't on the line when they put pen to paper. Should I want to maximise my chances of winning in battle, it may be worthwhile for me to consider employing some more unorthodox strategies. I can treat my enemies into overextending. There's a 39% chance that this will work and I will gain 100 martial lifestyle experience and also practice manipulative tactics for five years which will give me even more enemy fatal casualties and even more defender advantage. But there's also a 60% chance that it fails and I get nicknamed the foolish and end up spending 75 um, prestige. Also, as usual, the numbers only add up to 99%. Something they do, still don't seem to have fixed since launch. I suspect that that's more likely to be something to do with uh, a rounding issue, though. Or hit and run tactics will wear my foes down. We can gain hit and run tactics for five years, where we take fewer retreat losses. We've got enough prestige to risk, or we could, or we could just lose 12 stress, uh, which I don't really need to do. 
I mean, this is definitely a roll of the dice. Nickname the Foolish. It's just a nickname. I mean, who cares? Let's gamble. Gamble and see what happens. Broken dreams. Yeah, there we go. I gather my retinue together for some war games, eager to try out my idea of faking a route to lure my enemy opponents into overextending. Unfortunately, when my team attempted to try my new tactic, we were unable to hold our ground. We suffered a quick and humiliating defeat, and the enemy side quickly broke through our line and caused our ranks to disintegrate. Everyone who participated in the games now think I am a fool and wants no further involvement with my ideas. So we, we are no, we're known as the foolish and we lose a bit of prestige, but who cares? It doesn't really matter. Let our enemies be lulled into a false sense of security. So we're not gaining an awful lot of money. Um, we still haven't got the light horsemen yet up to full size. We definitely want to wait for that to happen. Um, before we do anything else. We also want to get a little bit of money in the bank. I think I made a bit of a mistake there because I just remembered at the end of the last video I said I wanted to build up a bit of a war chest because the moment you go to war you start losing money because you're spending that on maintenance. Uh, so we will uh, we'll wait until we've got a little bit more money in the bag. I'm just going to go up to speed four just for the time being. There's probably not going to be an awful lot uh, going on, an awful lot happening. You'll see that our income has now gone up from plus 2.4 to plus 3.8 because the uh, men at arms retinue has now fully reinforced, so it doesn't cost us quite as much there. We probably want to be at least at, I don't know, 50 or 60 before we pull the trigger on this one, which is, is no bad thing. We are uh, 2574, 2575, building some more up there. Uh, what is our marshal still doing? I mean, we could we could just get the levy size increased and worry about the. If you move, do you lose progress? It says it'll be aborted, but I don't know if he loses progress because we're currently trying to build up the um, county control uh, in Cambridgeshire. But having bigger numbers is probably going to help us more. Let's go ahead and just move him uh, onto organising levies. We could actually just put him on train commanders and reduce our uh, men-at-arms um, cost. But I think just getting the levy size up is probably a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, Jorvik, are you at war with anybody? Not at the moment. That's actually a bit of a shame. If he was at war with somebody, that would have made this a lot easier. What about our allies? Uh, Alba is not at war, and I don't think Wessex is either. No, so nobody's at war at the moment. Uh, my wife is once again pregnant. We're up to 80 gold now, so let's go down to speed 3. Uh, and what are we at? Yeah, see, that's not that high in terms of our levies. You haven't made a huge deal of difference there, have you? Whereas the reinforcement rate is plus 20%. Men at arms maintenance minus 20%. Councillor's martial skill. Oh, right, that's what the tally for it. 5% chance of improving or finding a new commander or knight each month. I think we're just going to put it on that for a while. It'll save us some money. And, um... Yeah, let's go ahead and, uh... You are a healer. Do we have a physician? We do not. Would you like to be physician? How much would it be to recruit you to court? 25 uh, didn't want to spend that money, but we want to um, appoint this court position. And that costs 10 anyway. Ouch. Okay. I just let this get back up to 60 again. So we've got a new court position, so that's fine. We'll save, we'll save some money up. Should be saving a, a little bit of money here. Well, as soon as we get to 60, we'll be ready to go. There we go, 62. That's fine. Um, so, you are not at war. Let us go and start this war. We're going to declare a war. It's going to be a holy war for the Duchy of... Um, what is this the Duchy of? It's Jorvik itself, isn't it? Yeah, Duchy of Jorvik. Similar army size. Let's declare the war. We're not going to mess around here. We're going to call our allies in straight away. So, Wessex, please stand up. Alba, please stand up. They should both come in. We also need to raise the uh, armies. You can already see we're now losing 4.2 um, 
gold per month. So we do not want this to be a long war at all. We also want it to go in our favour. Start marching north with the army. He's going to try and keep in the forest. Now he's heading this way. I don't like that. I'm going to back up. I'm going to meet up with Wessex's men down here. If I if I get in here with Wessex, we've probably got enough men to um, take them on. Actually, yeah, he's running from me now. Let's see if we can head him off this way. Alba's men are moving in at this point. Now, if we move into here... Oh, we might have a balanced fight. I, th I thought we were only going to catch a single stack. Now, this isn't going to go great, but all of our allies are about to pile in. They're going to be a few days behind, so it's my army that's taking the brunt of the beating, unfortunately. Um, our knight, I thought our knight just slain somebody there. Uh, we have ourselves uh, another son. Excellent. Now, they have now brought in their ally... Which is a little unfortunate. But th their army just got defeated. So let's go in very quickly. We will take attrition here. But it's better to do this while we've got higher numbers. We're going to try and siege this out as quick as we can. It's only a level 3 fort. So we should be able to take this. We're being raided over there. I'm not even going to bother with that right now. We've got a few... D oh, we're actually uh, sieging all three of these at the same time, although it's this one down here that I need. The sacking of Cheshire. Uh, Earl Wolf has paid the price for Jarl Ivers' um, avarice. With the fall of the settlement of Chester, Swiss of Greater Chester are left undefended. Uh, unopposed, the um, Soiria raiders have run rampant, kidnapping and enslaving every skilled worker they can find. Uh, we can curse them. We can pay some money to Earl Wolf, which we can't afford. We can't afford to pay the money either way at the moment. We are at war. So we're just going to have to wait. Right, see, now now they've got some reinforcements coming in. Uh, we've got a new martial lifestyle perk. Now, I could carry on going down here. A lot of this stuff is nice, but I think, actually, because we're at war... Minus 20% friendly casualties, I think, is well worth picking up right now. So, yeah, they are they are raising some units. They're probably going to sort of start heading south. But that's fine. I want to, I want to continue these... Um, you're going out to sea, which is weird. Two months left on the Siege of Jorvik. We're already at 15%. This siege is going to be done very soon. Those guys are going out to sea. There's not an awful lot they're going to be able to do. And we just want to keep all of our armies close to one another. You've just broken the siege. Why have you just broken the siege? That was not what you should have done. Now, they're coming down here now and they're trying, trying to siege Warwickshire. They're making decent progress, but we might be quicker. Uh, we are three months. This siege down here, five months. See, this army standing here could easily go and pick this 33 stack off. Oh, they've broken the siege, I think. Oh, why did they do that? That was weird. Are they just trying to build up a massive death stack? That's really weird to break a, break a siege off um, like that. I don't know what the, what the AI's... Uh, motivation for that was uh, if they go into attack which they are i am am i going to break the siege here to go in and reinforce this i think i am yeah unfortunately they they um they backed off from that encounter i'm going to try and take them on though and the hope here is we can do some damage to them and then push them back and go and start sieging again Looks like that battle is going our way just about. We get, oh, we actually rolled an 8. And we're getting some better rolls than is there. Okay, that's fine. All I want to do is select my army. Oh, we've just run into that 33 stack, which is also fine. Right, okay. My glory is widely known. Let's go and try and siege that again. Where, now, where are you going to head off to? 
We're up to 69% here. They're going to come back with that 2.5k stack. I mean, we definitely have more men than him now. You just stay there. I'm not sure how defensive bonus works on CK3. I'm not sure whether the army getting attacked has a defensive bonus or whether the... Um, because it's his fault that he has the defensive bonus there. Uh, I'm going to wait until he commits to that fight. In fact, he's throwing those men in, so he might have enough there. To no, he's not actually going in. We need to make sure that we win these encounters. That's that's the problem here. We are taking a crossing penalty, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, my marshal has been showing off a promising new recruit. He may not be as noble stock as you, my liege, but... On, his, on my name, I swear that Leofheim is the one you want at your side. Um, you've got 16 Marshall. He's a skilled tactician. He can cross water without, advan uh, without advantage penalties. He's an unyielding defender. He's spindly, though. He's a blade master. He would be really good, I think. Um, yeah, recruit him to court. I guess he comes in as a, as a new knight. Okay, so that's another battle one. Let's just run in over here. Again, we're losing men doing this, but we want to make sure we, we keep uh, the pressure on here. And to be fair, it's, not, it's actually not a bad thing to lose some men during the course of a war because the amount of money that you spend on maintenance drops significantly. So once again, we're going to try this. Four months left. Hopefully our onagers will take it down quite quickly. So we haven't had anything of our siege just yet. He's moving in there. He's got a 1.5k stack now. I'll probably just leave him be. Unless he attacks me directly. If he attacks me directly, it could be problematic. Although that's only showing my numbers. There is another thousand uh, units here from Alba. So I'm just going to... I don't think he can beat me to the siege. He might be flanking around to the south because he might be coming in here to attack me. But I think if he does, I think it'll work out worse for him. Because I do have the greater numbers. Yeah, so Darby's under siege, but that's going to take them a while. We've only got... 15 days left on uh, on this on, on uh, Pockington here and there's the 100% so the war is now over we are going to enforce our demands thank you very much uh, now then let's uh, disband our levies so that does put us over the domain limit again 8-5 uh, if we were to get our wife to manage domain does that put us up any? It does not, so we'll leave her on assist ruler. Okay, so we've got to get rid of three. That's all right. Um, yeah, we're well and truly above the domain limit, so let's go ahead and get rid of these three places here. So, just grant them to random people. Um, you, I mean, I do want you to stay a night. Um, let me just, um, you can still be my knight and a landholder, I'm pretty sure. So, we'll grant you that title. Um, but if I look at my knights... Yeah, I definitely want you to be a knight. I mean, you've got 22 marshal for heaven's sake. Um, so, we'll grant this to you. And we'll grant this to... You. You've also got decent marshal. You should probably be a knight as well. Um... Okay, cool. Yeah, so now now, now we can force you to be a knight because that automatically invites you to the court. Got some decent knights now. That's, that's useful. Uh, we are going to go back with the council to um, control. Probably in the East Riding here. It'll take some time. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how that went. I mean, that's a good chunk of land, and I think um, we've now become the culture head for, for Anglo-Saxon, which is also great, um, which basically means we get to choose the focus for our tech. 
so we'll look at that in just a moment. Uh, but what I was about to say was, I think one of the good things now is that we've weakened Jorvik significantly enough that we don't need to worry too much about him declaring war on us. Um, so we get to choose what we focus on. We're currently focusing on the banners, um, which gives us 15% levy reinforcement rate. I think that is well worth uh, keeping the focus on. So let's go ahead and do that. What do we need to do here? We can ask our Head of Faith for gold. I mean, I'm getting decent amount of piety. There's no reason not to ask for that money. So let's just go ahead and ask for it. Um, we can designate a guardian for our son. Um, this is my player heir. So I'm going to be the guardian myself and get some decent marshal on him if we're lucky. Uh, there's the money. So what we could do is actually use it to build up some holdings. Because we haven't built anything yet. Um, something that gives us more levies and more taxes. Uh, a nice. And hunting grounds are pretty decent. Gives defender advantage as well. Light cavalry damage and pursuit. We do have some light cavalry. Let's go and construct uh, hunting grounds. So start investing some of this money. Yeah, feeling a little bit stronger now. We've started to sort of ex expand out. Uh, we can declare a war on Yol Sigurdur, which is this guy down here. So we can probably grab... Uh, we need to wait until we're back up to 80 piety, but we could grab the rest of East Anglia. So that will be my focus for the next video. Uh, and that'll be uh, another duchy that we'll have, because we'll have the whole of the East Anglia duchy. I now actually have the whole... Uh, no, I don't. I was going to say I have the whole... No, I don't. I have the entire Jorvik duchy uh, at this point. So that's really nice. I actually have two duchy titles. Not necessarily a great thing because that means having two titles at the same rank. If I were to die, um, those titles would be split. Uh, although I don't actually no, I don't actually hold the title. So that is that is the Yaldum of Jorvik, but I don't hold that title. That's fine. That actually works out. So we only have this the, a single top level title. Um, Were you at war there a second ago? Are you still at war? You're not at war. But you're looking pretty battered and bloody and bruised. Do we have any prisoners that we can... Cannot be ransomed? Just negotiate your release. Um, you're a prisoner... A covetous brute and a homosexual. You've got 16 Marshall, though. Alfred, you are... Re I have no... Yeah, you are now recruited. Does that mean I can make you a knight? thought he would have been in here. There he is, yeah. He's only got th three prowess. Well, it doesn't matter. We can allow him to be a knight if need be. If he gets killed off, he gets killed off. I always forget it's prowess, not martial, that, that counts towards that. Um, we can usurp the Yaldum of Jorvik. We control enough counters in the Yaldum of Jorvik to usurp the title. Peacefully usurping a title may cost gold when it comes with advantages. You may increase your rank. You will gain Dijor Cassis Belli on the titles at the Dijor part of the title. Well, we've already got all of those anyway. Vassals may now consider you their rightful liege and you gain prestige. However, there are some downsides. Your vassals may desire the title. If your realm has a succession law with multiple realm heirs, it will also infect who inherits what titles. We don't have enough gold to do it anyway, but we're going to go and untick that. I can lawfully imprison my... Who are you? Just a random courtier, because she's a fornicator. No, do not care about that at all. Um... Yol Ivar has a stronger army than me. Does he really? Oh, well. 
And this is that's um, you, right? The old Ivar. Surprised that you've got a stronger army than me. That must be counting all of your. Uh, oh, you're allied to Sweden. Yeah, that'll be why then. Uh, my sister, Countess Edber, has lately been telling me how impressed she is with the generosity of Enwil. That is our. Yeah, that's that's the one that I can arrest, isn't it? Because she's the fornicator. Is she not my um, physician? Yes, she is. Uh, apparently, she came through for her when she needed her the most. There you go. So why would we want to arrest her? But I'm going to pause the game here uh, because we are over the 20 minute mark. And uh, yeah, I think grabbing three counties in a single run there was a was a good little bit of progress. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you are still enjoying this series of Crusader Kings 3. If you are, please do consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing and sharing and commenting and all that other good stuff that really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching all the way through to the end of the video. I'll see you next time. And until then, goodbye for now.